Good afternoon, uh, everybody. In the previous uh, class, I introduced uh, model analysis uh, to you all. The objectives of the model analysis and also how the model should be. What type of uh, the similarities the model has to satisfy in order to predict the behavior of prototype after testing the model in the laboratory. In order to extend the results on the model to the prototype, the model has to satisfy certain norms. These norms are called as the similarities. That is what similitude is. The model and prototype should satisfy geometric similarity. Similarity in linear dimensions. Then the model and prototype has to satisfy the kinematic similarity. Similarity in kinematic properties such as the velocity, acceleration, time, discharge. And in this connection, we discussed on what is LR. LR is the linear scale ratio. It is the ratio of linear dimension of the prototype to the linear dimension of the model. LR is equal to LP by LM, BP by BM, HP by HM, DP by DM. Then coming to the kinematic viscosity, the velocity. You know the velocity is a vector quantity. So, the kinematic similarity means similarity in motion. That means the velocity at the corresponding points, I mean the ratio, the ratio of velocities at the corresponding points in the model and prototype should be same. If you take at point one at a particular location the velocity in the model, similarly at other same point in the prototype, that Vp1 divided by Vm1 is what we call it as Vr. If you take at any other point also, all these ratios of velocities at those corresponding points, both in the prototype and model, should be same. That means if you take one, two, three, four, five points, the velocity in the prototype by velocity in the model at first point is should be equal to velocity of prototype by velocity of model at the second point. Is equal to velocity of prototype by velocity of model at third point, and so on. Here, velocity being the vector quantity, not only the magnitude ratios should be same, but also the direction of velocity both in the prototype and model also should be same. This is what we conveyed in the kinematic similarity. Now let us go into the last thing, which we call it as uh, the dynamic similarity. Dynamic similarity means actually meaning is similarity of forces. That is what we need to understand. First one is similarity in linear dimensions. Kinematic is similarity in motion. Third one is dynamic similarity means similarity in forces. That we will discuss and through that we continue our lecture. So the topic is dynamic similarity. 
identity means similarity of forces similarity of forces that means actually similarity of forces next so dynamic similarity exists between model and prototype if the ratios of the ratios of the corresponding forces at the corresponding points should be same not only the magnitude here the direction also the direction of the corresponding forces at the corresponding points should be same now you think carefully similarity of forces means in a particular problem for example how many forces may be there there may be different forces even if you whatever forces till now you know in fluid mechanics if you take it you know basically what is inertia force then you know what is viscous force you know what is gravity force you know what is pressure force you know what is surface tension force you know what is elastic force or compressibility force so you know basically already these six forces you know it so even if you take these six forces are only acting forget about others even if you take like that also now if i take the ratio for example inertia force in the prototype divided by inertia force in the model is equal to viscous force in the prototype divided by viscous force in the model is equal to for example then gravity force in the prototype divided by fg gra gravity force in the model is equal to for example pressure force in the prototype divided by pressure force in the model is equal to for example surface tension force in the prototype divided by surface tension force in the model is equal to for example elastic force or compressibility force in the prototype divided by elastic or compressibility force in the model all this should be same all this should be same and we call this as force scale ratio imagine that is it and again all these things we are taking at the corresponding points inertia force in the prototype to inertia force in the model at the corresponding points now you imagine is it possible really to satisfy this particular thing that means ratios of all the forces uh, is equal so this similarity is it physically possible practically if you imagine definitely it is not possible i once again here i repeat that uh, geometric similarity possible because it is only linear dimensions so that we can satisfy even there also there are difficulties but you can satisfy because for example if i say the length of the dam is 1 km whereas uh, the width of the dam is for example uh, 20 meters whereas the height of the dam is 100 meters so you see all this you should make same scale so then that itself is a little bit difficult but definitely we can establish uh, the geometric similarity with great difficulty 
you can take up even kinematic similarity also even though the velocity scale ratios at the corresponding points uh, even though that is uh, to be same that we can really achieve it but dynamic similarity because how many forces six forces which we know in fluid mechanics we have put it uh, then again these forces at the corresponding points uh, again actually not only the magnitude but also the direction also should be same so that's why this dimensional uh, this dynamic similarity satisfying this dynamic similarity satisfying dynamic similarity is extremely difficult is extremely difficult the reason i tell you why the reason i am telling you is uh, here if you take uh, in any problem which we take uh, naturally one for one or two three or three forces may be dominant rest of the forces may be insignificant so even if that ratio has to be same then if you have to consider it uh, then the process itself is becoming cumbersome and it's not possible to show that also that is why satisfying dynamic similarity is difficult actually so now what to do next but problem is unless you satisfy the dynamic similarity also you can your model test results are uh, cannot be extended to the prototype whatever results you get in on the model cannot be extended to the prototype cannot be used to predict the behavior of the prototype hence what to do that is where the next thought process has to begin because it is extremely difficult to really satisfy the dynamic similarity because of the number of forces that are involved because of the corresponding points at various corresponding points we have to satisfy because that it's not only the magnitude but direction also has to satisfy but also again the all these forces may not be really present in every problem actually there may be the magnitudes of these problems may be in such a way one is huge the other one is very insignificant so if you want to show all the problems in every problem actually the model test then naturally it becomes uh, it's really 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 difficult hence uh, there must be a solution out of it there must be a way out for this what is the way out for this uh, is actually first you list out what are the various forces first list out in fluid mechanics what are the various forces so that is the first step once you list out actually can we prepare where basically what you call it as uh, the dimensional numbers uh, based on these forces can you prepare some set of dimensional numbers using this forces once you prepare the dimension dimension less numbers when i mention dimension less num less numbers means uh, if you prepare that actually then based on that depending upon the problem basically which of the forces has to be taken we define it and take it forward in such a way that the dynamic similarity is satisfied all the continuous study is only to satisfy dynamic similarity so for that now what i am doing is what are the various forces various forces acting right acting on a body in fm in fluid mechanics right then what are the various forces number 1 is inertia force inertia force you know it it is mass into acceleration if you write mass mass is equal to for example i will write straight away mass is equal to rho into volume this is velocity by time right rho into volume means uh, rho l cube here it is basically l t minus 2 or i can write it as rho into l cube into basically 
this is a uh, uh, velocity by basically time right or otherwise i can make it rho into l square into l by t into v because t i don't want to keep it so i can change it rho l square v square so this is first one magnitude also inertia force i take second one what is the second one actually i can take it is uh, once inertia force is over which is the, from the fluid properties i am taking slowly one after the other second force which is which is more important is viscous force viscous force means tau into basically area am i right tau is equal to mu into v by y into area this is how you go around so it is mu into v by l into area is l square so i can write it as mu v l second one the third one is gravity force right gravity force is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity so it is rho l cube mass basically rho into volume into acceleration due to gravity means g so right this is only rho g l cube then fourth one is pressure force which we call it as fp pressure force is equal to pressure intensity into area so pressure intensity if i write p into area is l square this is next one then fifth one which i can write it is uh, what you call it as uh, the surface tension force i write it as fs is equal to surface tension force into length because surface tension force is force per unit length so this is sigma n and the last one is elastic force or this is also called as compressibility force f e is equal to elastic force is equal to again same elastic force is equal to which i can write it as uh, the uh, be basically it is uh, k into that means uh, bulk modulus um, bulk modulus is equal to stress by strain strain doesn't have any unit so naturally the elastic force is equal to k into area elastic stress into area elastic stress into area is k into l square right this i can write it as elastic stress into area right this so now the four six forces we have considered so the six forces are once again inertia force viscous force gravity force pressure force surface tension force then elastic force please order also you remember inertia force number one viscous force number two then third one is the gravity force fourth one is pressure force surface tension force next elastic force please remember the order also right based on this actually what we have done next num next thing is uh, what are uh, using this actually we defined what are dimensionless numbers all this exercise is only to show dynamic similarity to prove that dynamic similarity exists between the model and prototype dimensionless numbers there are five numbers which we call it as number 1 reynolds number number 2 basically fraud number number 3 euler number number 4 faber number 
number 5 mac number these are the five dimensionless numbers once again reynolds number fraud number euler number weber number mac number so once i define each one of them actually first one if i take it what is reynolds number Reynolds number is denoted by capital R suffix E. It is equal to Reynolds number is defined as the ratio of inertia force to viscous force. It is the ratio of inertia force to viscous force. And just now I have explained what is inertia force. Inertia force is nothing but it is mass into acceleration. It is mass into acceleration and mass into acceleration already just now it is rho L cube into acceleration is a velocity by time. And again in that rho L cube one L and denominator T I made one velocity. So finally the dimensions I have written it as rho L square V square just refer back royal square v square then what is viscous force just now i showed viscous force is also equal to shear stress into area area so shear stress into that means uh, mu into v by y into this uh, what we have done mu into v by y into area is l square so if i take uh, y also depth only so it is L, so L L will cancel, so it will be mu V L. So now if I write the ratio R E is equal to what will happen actually? It is rho L square V square divided by mu V L. If I cancel V V L L, if I cancel L L, then what will happen actually? It is rho L V by mu. This is what you are getting actually. Inertia force by viscous force. If I am putting it, uh, just uh, see it how what I am getting actually. Rho V L by mu. This is what we are getting. Rho V L by mu. It is equal to Rho V L by mu. So Reynolds number is equal to Rho V L by mu. what is rho rho is the mass density v is what average velocity what is l is called as remember that l is not just length l is the linear dimension that's why i call it as characteristic length characteristic length so the l represents only some linear dimension for example you take pipe flow in case of pipe flow This L is equal to the dia of pipe. So they, therefore, for pipes, pipe flow, Reynolds number is equal to rho V into D by mu. So here when we are deriving this equation, L means actually it is the linear dimension. That's all. So this is how. Suppose if you want to do open channel flow, for example, instead of diameter, there it becomes hydraulic radius. So for example, if I take uh, for open channel flow, for open channel flow, this Re is equal to rho V R by mu. So this R is hydraulic radius. So this is uh, the as far as Reynolds number is concerned. You know that uh, you already we know that uh, mu by rho is equal to kinematic viscosity. Therefore, Re also can be written as VL by nu. Whereas for pipe flow, if you want to write it, uh, Re can be written as uh, it is basically instead of Vd by nu, basically, right? Whereas for open channel, if you want to write it, you can write Vr by nu, where nu is the kinematic viscosity. So this is first dimensionless number. 
first dimensionless number what we have learned is Reynolds number. Reynolds number is what? It's ratio of inertia force to viscous force. What is inertia force? What is viscous force? You need to explain. Once you get rho L square V square and bottom one is mu VL, put it and get the equation. So that completes for us one number. So let me go into the second number. Proud number. This fraud number basically is defined as ratio of square root of inertia force to it is square root of inertia force to gravity force. In square root of inertia force to gravity force. Again, you know inertia force is just now we did it. Inertia force is equal to rho L square V square. So what is gravity force actually? Gravity force is equal to M into G. So mass is what rho L cube into G. That's all rho L cube into G. So if you rho L cube into G, if you put it, then uh, Basically, let us take it into this uh, and now write it. What is fraud number? This is how it is represented. Square root of rho L square V square divided by rho L cube basically into G. Rho rho will be cancelled. L square. So, so what it will be happening? V square by G L under root. This is what will happen. Uh, write R is equal to v by root g l so what is fraud number fraud number is equal to v by root g l again once again i remind here also v is velocity g is acceleration due to gravity l is the characteristic length or linear dimension so right fraud number is generally basically it is used for open channels it is used for open channels to know whether the flow is critical, subcritical, or supercritical. So fraud model, fraud number means immediately you should understand this law has applicability in open channels. That must be the first answer you should give, right? Uh, when we are applying here again, this L characteristic length dimension, there is D, which is called as hydraulic depth. And Froude's model law uh, is not basically applicable to pipe flow. Generally, we don't come across any of the problems related to pipe flow here, unless uh, the pipe is not running full, only half it is running then probably this law is uh, way more, more sense. Otherwise, for a pipe flow, Reynolds model law, Reynolds uh, number is predominantly applied. Whereas for open channel flow, we apply Froude's number. So this, uh, this is the applicability of Froude number actually. So if you take it, so now finally, what is Froude number? It is Froude number is equal to, so fraud number is equal to F4 is equal to velocity divided by root GL, where L is the characteristic length. So that is the second number. Now let us go for the third number, which we call it as Euler number. Euler number. So Euler number is also, again, it is square root of inertia force to pressure force again inertia force you know it rho into l square into v square and pressure force is equal to pressure intensity into area so it is p into l square so if i write euler number is equal to square root of rho L square V square divided by P into L square. L square L square will cancel. So you can write it as uh, it is V square by P by rho. Or 
v by square root of p by root so euler number is equal to finally it is v by square root of p by root this is the third number which we have found right after this third number the fourth number is weber number so weber number is also equal to basically it is also the square root of inertia force to surface tension force therefore inertia force is equal to rho l square v square whereas surface tension force is equal to surface tension is force per unit length so for surface tension into length so if i write weber number is equal to square root of rho l square v square divided by sigma into l ll will cancel so it is equal to square root of v square by if i take it uh, the bottom sigma by basically rho l or basically v by root of sigma sigma by rho l so finally weber number is equal to v divided by sigma by rho l so this is weber number and the final number is mach number this is M. again it is also square root of inertia force by elastic force so inertia force is equal to rho l square v square elastic force is equal to k into basically area l square so if i take it mac is equal to square root of rho l square v square by k l square l square l square will get cancelled so it is a square root of v square by k by rho so it is v by square root of k by rho Right. square root of k by rho is called as some constant c which is velocity of sound in fluid so these are the five numbers sir. very easy to write also even in the exams so you remember the forces number one inertia force order also please remember inertia force then viscous force then gravity force then pressure force then afterwards a pressure surface tension force then last one is uh, elastic force inertia force is equal to mass into acceleration is equal to rho l square v square second one viscous force is equal to shear stress into area it is equal to mu v l then third one is gravity force mass into acceleration due to gravity which is equal to rho l cube into g pressure force 
pressure intensity into area. So it is P into L square. Then surface tension force, surface tension sigma into L. Last one, elastic force K into area. It is equal to K into L square. Next, the numbers. Reynolds number. For all numbers, the numerator is constant. Only the denominator is changing. The numerator is inertia force. It is inertia force by viscous force. If you do that, it is rho V L by mu. Then number two, inertia to gravity, that is fraud number. Again, only difference is square root. Inertia force by gravity force is V by root GL. Third one is then inertia to pressure. Euler number. Square root of inertia force to pressure force is equal to inertia force to pressure force so that means what we v by root of p by rho then fourth one so fourth one is inertia surface tension force that is weber number Square root of inertia force by surface tension force. So then it, this is equal to V by root of basically sigma by rho L. Last one is Mach number. Square root of inertia force to elastic force. It is V by square root of K by rho, V by C. This is the last. So the, now why we have done all this? Actually, the problem is the dynamic to in order to establish dynamic similarity between the model and prototype the ratios of the corresponding forces at the corresponding points should be same but also done not only the magnitudes but also the direction also should be same establishing that is extremely difficult so in order to establish dynamic similarity we have chosen another path by final, finally finding out which are the forces, number one. Out of that, which are the significant forces. So in that direction, when we are moving, first we identified what are the forces uh, in the case of fluid mechanics, uh, which we commonly come across. And those forces which we have taken it, them are starting from inertia force, viscous force, then pressure of gravity force. Order also plays important. This inertia force, viscous force, then after the viscous force, gravity force, pressure force, surface tension force, and last one is the uh, elastic force. Now, basically, if you take the ratios of them, it gives different dimensionless numbers. So that dimension numbers, uh, Reynolds number, Froude number, then Euler number, Weber number, Mach numbers are defined. And, and the expressions for them are, are basically derived. So you should be able to derive the expression for Reynolds number, Froud number, then Euler number, Weber number, Mach number. Then what we will do with these uh, numbers that we discuss in the next class. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.